I'm sure you got your guitar and ready to rock with me here. And it's going to be a fun one because if you haven't gathered already, it's all about funk rock. Okay, so I've got a very like David Bowie inspired track here, but also some James Brown uh, elements and also some Stevie Wonder elements coming up here in the, uh, in the actual solo itself. So kind of a big amalgamation of a bunch of, you know, kind of funk R&B style, uh, especially like the track, like the track is really like a funk track. Okay. I mean, yes, it's pretty guitar heavy. Um, let's just listen to it for a second and you'll, you'll know what I'm saying. Okay, so there's quite a bit of guitar going on there. Of course, with like, you got that clean funk guitar. And of course, the other guitar. Oh yeah. Let me know what song that, that reminds you of, if, if, uh, if any. And then uh, actually, certainly the chorus also has a very, uh, so we got two parts to this song. So here comes the next, you can always tell just the drum fill, okay? And here's the next part of the, of the tune. Makes it, makes it go like this, right? So I hope you're grooving with me there and enjoying that vibe. So of course it's very funky, like I said, very guitar heavy because hey, it's rock guitar solo of the week. And, um, and yeah, if you caught my intro there, I'm just ripping on, on really like some rock guitar-esque kind of stuff that's uh, very blues based, of course. And really the key secret to playing funk rock or you know, funk and R&B is to not do anything different. <laughs> and what I mean by that is that it actually has all the same underlying technique and theory behind it. So we don't necessarily have to you know, reinvent the wheel or figure out a new key or new scales or anything to play because you know, blues and rock are very similar as you probably gathered. You know, if it weren't for blues, there would be no rock, right? So, and R&B and funk is very similar that it's also uh, very much derived from the blues and, and things like that too. So it has kind of that blues underlying uh, root to it as well. So, so what we're doing here is we're in the key of F sharp, okay? And if you do wanna get the, the tabs and the backing track for this, that's for jam play members only and you guys tuning in on the jam play members only area know that already you can download the uh, the gpx files and the pdf and also this jam track that i've recorded here for you um, and if you want to become a jam play member and you're watching on the campfire guitar star networks make sure to start your seven day free trial you'll find that link in the description below so guys let's just hop right in so i wanted to just give you uh just an overview first so as you guys know, we've got, um, and by the way, because we're live, make sure to drop in any questions that you have, okay? So just type those in, I'll get those, get those handled for you guys. So um, let's see. So th there's a couple of underlying things I wanted to show you just real quick. And one of them, of course, is we're in the key of F sharp. So what that means is that we're going to basically starting our pentatonic scales off of a uh, off of the brr, F sharp note. Okay, so that's the second fret of the low E string, which is F sharp. So why don't you just go ahead and warm up your fingers, maybe you haven't been playing today, and just go ahead and just play that scale as fast or as slow as you as you can. Just whatever, whatever feels comfortable. Okay. Maybe you know some patterns through there. That's kind of my go-to pattern, and now it's like a sequence of four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. And yeah, we're all based around this F sharp note here, okay? And if you've been catching some of the other rock guitar solos of the week, there's gonna be this extension scale. So we go up that minor pentatonic scale, slide that, once you get to the G string, slide that fourth fret into the sixth fret, 
which will line you up very nicely to hit these two notes up top. So that's the fifth and seventh frets on the uh, top two strings, the B and E string. So just go ahead and, and mess around with that for a second. So when we hit the G string, then you're gonna slide up to the sixth fret. Okay, so again, just get the fingers warmed up to see if you can go ahead and play through that particular sequence, okay? Okay, so that's the extension scale, and, and like I said, if you've been catching the other rock guitar solos of the week, pretty much every solo that I can think of right off the top of my head has, has involved that scale on some, on some level, uh, and especially, uh, so what we're doing there is we're doing an extension, as you're probably just hearing for yourself. I'm not actually doing anything different than a minor pentatonic scale, but it's just an extension of it, when, and, and bridges your first position minor pentatonic scale, which is this one, into your second position minor pentatonic scale, which is this one. But typically you don't really see a ton of licks being played in, in the first three strings of the second position, and but you do see a ton of licks being played on the top three strings of the second position, and that's just a beautiful way to, uh, to transition from one to the next. So hopefully that's making sense. And so of course, an, one of the big things that you can always do to basically double your knowledge on the guitar is to play what you know already in this lower octave and just move it up 12 frets, okay? So if we go ahead and start on the 14th fret, that's actually still an F sharp note. It's just an octave higher, so we can actually play that exact same thing. So there's our first position minor pentatonic scale up there. But we can also play that extension in the exact same way, so it's the exact same pattern. But you can hear for yourself how different it sounds, right? So if, if we're shredding on something like this, I can play that exact same lick. Actually, that wasn't exact, wasn't it? There we go, there was an exact lick. <laughs> So it's the exact same lick, exact same fingerings, uh, technique, etc. But you can hear for yourself just how different that sounds. And, I, and I've been trying to encourage you guys through this series to incorporate those elements. Like you don't have to, you know, learn a brand new scale or seven scales or whatever to to get something new sounding. Sometimes it's just the the matter of taking what you already know and just putting it into a different place of the guitar. And I really feel like that's a really big key element to rock guitar playing. And we're certainly gonna see that in this, uh, in this solo here today. So we've got those particular places. Now, the other thing and kind of a big key secret is to start your minor pentatonic scale off the A string. So an F sharp note is the second fret of the low E string, and we've already talked about that plenty. But you can also play an F sharp note on the ninth fret of the A string. So what that means that we've got a five note minor pentatonic scale, which is still 100% totally a minor pentatonic scale. Uh, and you may, may know this as your fourth position minor pentatonic scale, which is start on the ninth fret of the low E string. So a lot of people know that as their fourth position, but also you can just think of it as a minor pentatonic scale starting from the ninth fret of the A string. So that would just look like this. We've got one, four, one, three, one, three, and then we just gotta adjust because that old B string just needs a little adjustment. So that would be the 10th fret and uh, 12th fret, which I'm choosing to use my second and fourth fingers just to keep everything lined up. And then a one, four to finish it off. Okay, and if you really want to hear it kind of resolve, you can go two frets higher, okay, up to that F sharp note on the 14th fret of the high E string. So, so what that would look like, a ninth fret, here we go, let's play this one together, ready, go. Okay, let's start, and we'll go down. time a little bit faster ready go okay 
And so those are the where this solo is gonna be composed, and I'm gonna show you all kinds of killer licks inside of here. And of course, we're gonna be really focusing on the funk elements. And a big part of that, of course, is rhythm. So we're gonna be really focusing on a lot of 16th note elements. So we've got one, two, three. So that's kind of the So actually, let's put on the track and suss out the... Uh... Okay, so there's our tempo, right? One, two, three, four. Now, if we were to clap out the 16th notes, we'd be looking for... One E and a D and a three. So what we can do is, and I'm getting shocked by some. Whew. There's like an electrical current coming through something. Whew. That's weird, man. I'm sure you saw me jolt. Whew. Okay, so getting back from being shocked. Um, so we've got. So if you get your your um, your right hand going like this, that's going to access your sixteenth note. So we got it's like one, two, three, four, one e and the two e and the three e and the four e and go ahead and just do this exact same thing that I'm doing and just see if you can line up with me for a second. So I'm, of course I'm using dead weight across the um, uh, the the strings here with my left hand, and I'm just strumming up and down and in tempo, by, and I'm kind of thinking to myself, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Okay, so those are four, groups of four in between each beat. So if we got, boom, 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 right? So there's our tempo, right? Like one, two, three, four. We got one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, chicka, 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 chicka. So there's gonna be a lot of elements like that inside the tab and you'll see that tabbed right out. So why don't we go ahead and pull up the tab just on the very first page and have a look at this. So um, the very first thing is, is we're gonna, we're, we are gonna throw in some rhythmic elements into this solo. So uh, we're not gonna be just shredding nonstop. We're gonna be kind of accessing the 16th note groove and some funk elements and of course, we're gonna have some tasty licks in here too. So the very first thing is we're gonna actually mirror what's going on in the track, which sounds like this. So the big thing is I'm, is I'm doing that 16th note rhythm, and the, the little figure that's happening here is I've got my F sharp minor pentatonic scale, and I'm doing this one extension note, which you'll find in either major pentatonic or um, or your F sharp Dorian scale. So it's just okay. So that note right there, and we're going to combine that with this note on the fifth fret. So okay. So it kind of sounds like a little bit dissonant, doesn't it? it sounds actually very dissonant. And that's what you call a tritone, and you'll find those all over funk guitar. And so we're gonna be going like this. And we're just gonna resolve that up to the, the fifth fret. So I'm choosing to use my third and fourth fingers. But you can you can use your first two fingers if those are kind of more strong and, and just more comfortable. But yeah, so. Okay, let's try that for a second. Ready, go. Ready, go. Ready, go. Okay, and like I said, if you're having problems with this, just make sure that this is just on autopilot, your right hand, okay? So in this case, I'm just, just really focusing on the, on the top two strings. Ready, go. Ready, go. 
And of course, the big thing is I'm just engaging and disengaging those fingers. And you'll see that tabbed out with the rhythm above. If you just kind of, even if you don't know how to read rhythmic notation, I'm sure you can see we've got down, uh, down, up, 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 down, up. Okay? So down, up, 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 down, up. Right? So that's why the tabs are super handy to have. Um, and you'll see those on the screen right there. But yeah, just zoom in on that very first bar and you'll see all those 16th notes and the X's right on the, on the staff there. Those are representing those chicka chickas, right? So if we just get this on autopilot and consider that each one of those groupings are a grouping of one E and a, like they're a grouping of four strums, then we've got down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, and then um, yeah. So and then of course that that last uh, grouping of sixteenth notes is going to be on the fifth fret. So. Okay, so we repeat that now. And then I've got this lick for you here. Okay, so uh, it's tabbed out like this, like six down to four. Two, four. So that's all on the G string except for the last note. So. Okay, so that's six, four, two. Okay, so six, four, two, four. So I'm just switching back and forth between those two bits. And you can optionally add in this as as the first note of that lick, which would be the, uh, the sixth fret and the fifth fret. And that's, that's again, going back to that connection aspect, right, that we were talking about earlier of connecting those two scale and playing those together. And we'll see that lick, and we've seen those in previous rock guitar solos of the week that I've been producing, but. Um, Just classic, classic rock guitar licks right there. So we can start this by going. You can actually do double stops all along that. So of course that's just combining the B string at the same time. So in this case it's six and five, but then these two positions is just right behind on the same fret, so four and four. Two and two, and then ending on this uh, fourth fret of the D string. Okay, and that's the first first bit. So we're just switching back and forth between the. So it's a really cool way to start a solo is to actually really make your solo very rhythmic and with the band and not departing from the band and, and just doing your own thing. So this is like a way to play a solo in a way that still has a lot of connection to the band and to the music going on around you, which is really important because, you know, are you going off on a actual solo? Like are you just playing solo or are you playing with the band and are you playing with the music? which of course is the goal, um, which is kind of interesting when you think about it, you know, because we're so, as guitar players, we love soloing, it just feels so cool, but um, the, to really play a great solo, I believe that you need to be connected with the band, with the music and, uh, that's happening underneath you. So that's what really creates the best solos, of course. So this is a great way to do that, where you're still connected with the band, still playing rhythm, but you're playing some tasty, cool licks, and you know, it's still, out front and, and uh, you know, in your face. So here we go. So yeah, so we got that. So that's the first bar. And then the only other switch up, uh, so we've got some repeat symbols in here, okay? So, um, uh, so that, that whole first bar would get repeated. And then um, we're just gonna switch this. We're just gonna play this note now our fifth fret of our high E string, which is an A note. 
We're just gonna switch that down an octave to play it here. I wanted to show you this variation of this funk guitar move. So another tritone, which sounds really dissonant, but when you start funking it up like that, it sounds really funky. Like that's like funk rock guitar, or sorry, funk guitar, kind of like in a nutshell, you know? So it's the exact same rhythm, the exact same everything. We're just gonna, we're just playing that note down an octave, which just changes this into, okay? So it's the same thing, but yeah, you'll see two and four uh, on the second bar there, or sorry, the second line, which is bar three. And the way this tabbed out is you can play these guys, but in, kind of whatever one, whatever one's just more accessible and, and uh, sounding good to you. So like two and four up to five, okay? Or you can hit that top two strings at the same time. So we got. And if you're ready for that lick. Okay, so a question came in. I have no problems with straight 16th rhythms, but struggle with offbeat accents. Advice on how to train odd grooves. So, um, yeah, this I think this will be a really good challenge for you because, uh, and I would really, I would really try to get a metronome set up for this one, where you can and, and feel free to actually set your metronome to actual 16th notes, right? So that would be really fast in this case. It'd be would literally literally be going at that tempo tick, 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 like really fast but that um but or maybe eighth notes but just so, something that won't drive you too crazy but yeah and in this very first line you'll you'll see that we've got we're like as I, as i mentioned that's just going non-stop and but you'll clearly see on the rhythmic notation even if you don't know how to read rhythmic notation just know that this is on autopilot and we're in groups of four, so one E and a, two E and, a, or you can just think one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and you'll clearly see the X's, which are that sound, and then the notes, which are either that or that, right? Like the actual fretted notes are making the notes, which are represented on the tabs there, and that will um, that will get you sorted out on that rhythm. So. Uh, yeah, and, and you'll just really clearly see what is muted and what is not. But yeah, get a metronome going. See if you can even just lock in like this, right? First, just making sure that you can really get that on autopilot before you start uh, clicking some of those things. And maybe, yeah, just start slow, of course, and, and see if you can get this particular little funky rhythm, you know? So, and that's the thing, like if you're not used to playing funk, it can be really, really hard to do this at the beginning, but you know, um, you know, and this goes back to like some basic chording stuff too. Like you can be going, you know, of course that's, um, kind of reminiscent of night moves by Bob Seger. And so that, that might be a cool move for you to do too, is, is to just get back to a basic tune like that. That's using that slap strum. You know, and just getting used to disengaging those left hand fingers and getting a little slap strum with that right hand. And, but yeah, it just instantly upgrades your guitar skills on, on all fronts, you know, your funk abilities, your acoustic strumming abilities. And then it also sounds really cool when you start muting notes in your solos too. So, okay, so moving on. Uh, yeah, so we've got that first couple of lines of the tab are gonna sound like this. One, two, ready. Go.
you'll see uh, on the third line of the tab, that's going to be bar five and six, you'll see this little riff and it gets, and there's a big repeat symbol on the, on the, uh, the, tab, the tab there where you'll see a, a big thick line with two dots. And that always means that we're going to take that section and repeat it. So we've got a very reminiscent uh, superstition-esque riff here going on. So, and it's cool because it's just all on uh, the second and fourth frets right on your minor pentatonic scale. So two, four, 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 two, two, four. Okay. But of course, that didn't sound like Stevie Wonder. You know, that didn't sound very funky. So we're gonna go like this. Okay, and you'll just see a couple of hammer-ons there where you'll, where you'll see the two with a little loop connecting the four. That's gonna be a, right? That's gonna be that hammer-on, which will, uh, you know, really help make this riff come together. But yeah, so very simple notes. Again, two and four just on the uh, A, D, and G strings. And so let's just take that line and just play it slow and see if we can uh, funk it up and make it sound juicy. So here we go. Let's, um, I'll start it. I'll uh, get the tempo going and you go ahead and hop in when you can. So here it goes. <laughs> So that, that's, that's the loop, right? So um, how would I, I, I'm just gonna play the two bars and then stop and then restart. So one, two, ready, go. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't stop there, my bad. Ready, go. Ready, go. Ready, go. Ready, go. And now this time, actually, I'll play it and just keep on looping it. Ready, go. So that's the next part. But yeah, so again, that's kind of a Stevie Wonder-esque little riff right there, right out of your minor pentatonic scale and really focusing on some making notes short and funky. So we're really playing that very staccato-esque. And in fact, if you actually uh, bring your pick back really close to your bridge, make it sound kind of like a clav. So we've got uh, that riff going on. And so of course, like when I play the note, I'm just releasing it, but instantly muting it with my left hand. Right. And just really making that, uh, making those short and really like kind of stabby right? And just kind of like having this jolting effect, which will make people shake their booties, you know, and dance. So we got. So this, this next little section, which is uh, on bar seven and eight of the tabs is just going to be, um, kind of reminiscent of Around the World by the Chili Peppers. You know, something like that, which is just really le leaning hard on the flat seven of the, uh, the minor pentatonic scale or the flat seven of F sharp. So in this case, it's gonna be the second fret and I'm resolving it to the root note an F sharp note, so. Okay. 
right? So that's always like a really cool move to do in a kind of funk rock context, which is leaning hard on the flat seven. Like, in fact, check this out. Like I can actually really lean hard on this and I think it kind of sounds good, so check it out. So you see what I mean? They can really lean hard on that flat seven. And again, it's just a, a funk move and just a cool uh, rock guitar thing to throw into your tool belt. You know, you can definitely uh, lock in with your band or your jam track or however you're, you're playing your solos and that's just a move that you can go to and just make it stabby and make it funky and, and just see if you can connect with, that, uh, with the rhythm of the band or the jam track and ultimately, hopefully, make people shake the booties. So, what do we got? Okay, so now we're gonna go back to that, that, uh, that little connector scale on the sixth and fifth frets of the G string and B string. So if we slide into that. Now what that's gonna do is that's gonna help us connect from our Hopefully you got that rhythm down on the, on the fourth and sixth frets down here, that, that kind of superstition-esque riff, because we're gonna do the exact same riff, just an octave higher. So we're gonna look at the four, six, five, seven, five, seven. Okay, so in that zone, just get comfortable with those notes. And, and the very first note is gonna be on the seventh fret, which is F sharp, seventh fret of the B string. Okay, so we've got seven, five, seven, five, seven. Okay. Then we're gonna go to four, six, five, seven, four, six, five, five, seven. Okay, so again, it's the exact same riff, the exact same melody is what we saw down here, it's just an octave higher. And it's, and it's gonna, just gonna access a different tone, a different style, a different level of energy and um, and, and also will require just a slightly different finger placement because we've got to adjust because of that G string, B string connection there. So uh, let's go ahead and jam on this for a second. So starting on that seventh fret, one, two, three, four. Um, what's cool about this is, is this is a great little connector to build up the energy and if you're playing with a really responsive band then your drummer and bass player and, and whoever else is going to connect with that because as a soloist if you're going Right, so that little connector will also connect you on a, on a pathway to inject more energy into the moment. So it's just a great classic way. Right? And yeah, there's like, as you can see, I'm approaching it a different, different way. And again, as that's hitting that flat seven, so it's not resolved until you go. Right, so that's why it kind of just builds tension and, and like I said, uh, creates that pathway for, you know, for more energy in, in the moment. So again, another rock guitar solo uh, thing for you, a uh, tool to put in your tool belt. So, and yeah, and then that's gonna set us up and you can, 
we're not doing anything too crazy. Like I said, we're playing the same riff, the same melody, but now we're an octave higher. So that, that little gateway right there is gonna help us uh, just play something really effective um, and have more energy in the moment. And just accessing a different zone. And yeah, an octave higher, it sounds higher, so it, it may have the feeling of elevated energy. So, okay, so that brings us to page two of the PDF. And that's going to bring us to another zone. We're gonna hit this again, that connector. And then we're gonna go all the way up to our, our minor pentatonic scale in the root position, but up top here. We're gonna throw in. So yeah, so we're just hitting this connector. So in this case, I'm barring the top three strings and just really outlining an F sharp minor chord uh, on the 14th fret. So, and yeah, and you can kind of do a little, uh, like just a slide. This kind of sounds very chili peppers to my ears. Um, and then, but also like a little bit of Chuck Berry in there when you, when you approach it from a one fret lower. Okay. And so I've set you up with a cool little lick. Um, and this kind of reminds me of Guns N' Roses a little bit, but definitely like, I've heard Slash play this in solos, but really it's more like a Chuck Berry type of move. But yeah, so we're hitting, uh, so again, we're, if you just kind of think about your minor pentatonic scale right here, just your home, home base minor pentatonic, that's where we're gonna be hanging out here for this next little section, okay? And if you caught my rock guitar solo of the week number six, which is called Mixing Prowess, and that was all about mixing major and minor together. And that's really what we're hitting on here is we're gonna tap into that major third note. And that move looks like this, when you, when you cover the 14th fret of the B string and G string, but then make it major by hammering in to the uh, 15th fret of the G. So we're changing that from like our minor to to major, right? So you can hear that, that sad to happy kind of lift, right? So, so we've got 14, 16, 14 with that hammer on. And, and, and we can just riff on that, so. So I'm, the only single note I'm playing is that final um, 14, uh, sorry, yes, yeah, 16 to 14 at the end. So kind of full tempo. Just again, like I said, very kind of old school rock and roll guitar right there. Very Chuck Berry-esque. Um, you know, if you think about, you know, just kind of like Johnny Be Good-esque. Okay, so we're really trying to just hit a really, um, high energy point here by going, we had this big builder connector, right? Creating another pathway for more energy. And then we're gonna go way up top and we're gonna be playing a bunch of strings at the same time, up to three notes at a time. So that will just make your guitar like really quite loud, right? So of course it's louder than playing one note, right? There's just more going on. So there's just kind of has this, this this feeling of more volume going on as well. So, so yeah, so we got this pathway, creating the pathway for more energy and then, okay. And then 
we're going to go back to something familiar and, and connect with, uh, with the song again by going uh, really something similar to what we did at the very beginning. <laughs> But, uh, and so what I'm talking about is bar 21 now, and that's, you'll see, we've got two notes going on at the same time up on the, uh, the 17th fret. So, and, and uh, pretty darn sure that's gonna be the same rhythm. It might be slightly different, but it's the exact same idea of getting back into that 16th note pattern, but we're doing it up high. Yeah, so again, connector, 14th fret. Back to funk. So this is a pretty hot lick as well. So um, that's bringing us to, what bar are we at? Bar 23. Okay. So very funky rhythm there and a very, uh, you know, I love repeating licks like this. As you can see, we, we are really like taking these chunks and we're not playing something different every time. We're grabbing a chunk and we're riffing on that. Grab another chunk, we're riffing on that. And here's another thing, another chunk that you can riff on. So 14, 16, 14, pull off to 16. So that's it. So 14, 14, 16, 14, 16. And then once you get into a nice little funky rhythm, I got. I just got a little descending lick that's going to bring us into the final uh, the final chapter of this solo. So yeah, so just a little kind of descending thing from 16, 14, 16, 14, 12. Okay, and you'll find that little passage uh, on. So that little passage is going to be ah man. Every time I touch my computer, it shocks me. Ah, oh, Okay, I think I gotta like not touch my guitar because something weird is happening. <laughs> oh man, that will wake you up. Okay, so yeah, so that little passage getting down was, was number 26. Oh, <laughs> I look forward to somebody writing me saying, and I'll know that somebody's tuning in to my live lessons because Somebody will say, yeah, I was tuning into that, that lesson and uh, when, were you getting shocked? <laughs> I'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, that one. Like the only time that's ever happened. And of course it's live, right? <laughs> Anyways, that's strange. I think it's because I'm touching my strings, touching my uh, computer, and then I can feel it on the, through my necklace. So maybe I should just take my necklace off, but my necklace is so cool. Anyways, <laughs> okay, so. All you electrical engineers out there can tell me what the heck is going on there. All right. Yeah, because I'm getting shocked on like the back of my neck. So, <laughs> okay, so this is bringing us down to uh, the top, or sorry, uh, the bottom of page two of the PDF. Um, so we're gonna outline probably the funkiest chord of all time, which is gonna be an F sharp nine chord. And, and it's just really like a dominant nine chord. It doesn't matter the fact that it's an F sharp, that doesn't make it particularly funky, but just because we're in the key of F sharp, that's why I said it's an F sharp nine chord is so funky. So uh, again, if uh, this is getting to that idea of playing notes and riffs off of the ninth fret of the, uh, of the A string, which is gonna be an F sharp note. So again, if you remember at the very beginning of the lesson, we outlined this minor pentatonic scale. Okay, so we've got 9, 12, 9, 11, 9, 11, 10, 12, 9, 12, okay? Okay, and a great chord that also works with that whole 
thing is this guy right here. Now, I'm playing this with my third finger barred. A lot of people really struggle with that. Now, you can also play it like this. So it's kind of like a condensed C add nine chord, if you know that chord. But in this case, if you just bump up your third and second fingers, okay, and then of course play it on the ninth fret. Okay, but I really like when I get that third finger barred, so I've got all five strings going on. Now this, my friends, if you start sliding it down from half a step below or half a step above, that gets a really great blues and funk chord into your tool belt. So. Okay. So if we, if we get that idea going on again with the 16th notes, one E and the two E and the... That's the thing like yes i have specific rhythms laid out for you here which are which i consider to be particularly funky but really the the, the key the key to doing this is is again getting that 16th note going on and you can literally play any one of those So as you can see, I'm really just improvising on that, but you can see that right hand is just chugging along and I'm just punching in those chords as long as, uh, you know, this thing is on autopilot and just riffing. You can actually really play a lot of uh, funk guitar techniques and a lot of this, this whole thing will make a lot of more sense. But that's really the key is to get this locked into the tempo and then you can literally just kind of punch and release, uh, you know, press and release, punch and release a lot of those chords and, and you'll start getting really rhythmical guitar playing happening. So, and again, if you're having problems with that one, just stick with this one, this four finger version. This is the difference between this and here's my version. Okay, you can also, reach that pinky finger now that it's free you know if you're doing this three finger version with the with the the, uh, the third finger barring the top three strings then you can actually reach this pinky finger up to the 11th fret of the high E string right so we get all kinds of cool, funky tones going on like that. And... Okay, so that's kind of the basic idea of what's happening there on bars 27 and 28. Just with the... And then, so really we're gonna be going just... Um, we're gonna be doing this, this ninth fret thing, but then accessing some licks right out of this minor pentatonic scale. So the first one is... Um, Nine and ten. So just this. So I'm riffing on the on the chord. That's the basic of an idea of what's going on here in the next few bars. Um, so, yeah, so that's basically what's going on, bar 31. 
And then at the very end, I just got a, got a nice little tasty minor pentatonic lick for you. Um, so what I'm doing here is, uh, actually, let's see, I'm trying not to shock myself. Okay, so we've got, this is kind of a cool little line that connects this passage into, into this passage. So here's a double stop, 12th fret is bending up a full step, catching the high E string. So 12th fret to the high E string, and then you can actually bump that up to the 14th fret. And again, that's outlying the, uh, your minor pentatonic scale already. So I, I kind of like going like that. So if I'm going, okay. And so that's, that brings us to the end of the solo, my friends. So, um, I'll tell you what, what I'm going to do now is it's, time to answer your questions. And so go ahead and get those typing fingers going, find that chat box, drop me in a comment, let me know that you are getting this. Uh, and if you have any questions about what we went over to in today's lesson, any questions about gear, about guitar playing in general, okay? Happy to chat with you guys and just answer any of your, uh, your burning questions when it comes to becoming a better guitar player. So, um, now, what I'm going to do while those questions come in is I'm just going to put on the track and just have a rip over it. And, and basically, I'll lay out this solo that you'll see tabbed out for you. And if you want the tabs, if you want the, uh, the jam track, make sure that you become a Jam Play member. And over on the Campfire Guitar Star Networks, you guys will probably see that you can get a seven-day free trial uh, through that link that I'm providing. And you Jam Play members that are watching inside the community's mem community member know that you, uh, sorry, the community area, you guys already know that you can download this, this Jam track, download these tabs, and just get all this, all this stuff happening. So while those questions come in, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just have a rip over here. All right, here we go. Shall start from the start here, okay, here we go.
Okay, so a question has come in about the double stop bend. How do you do the double stop bend? So I think that what uh, this question is uh, regarding is going to be um, just that last passage there at the very end where I was connecting this guy. Okay. Okay, so uh, probably the big thing that you may be challenged by is actually just getting a decent bend in the first place. So, uh, so what's what's happening here is that I'm I'm bending up that second uh, that second string, the B string on the 12th fret, up a full step. And how I'm doing that is by loading up three fingers on that string, right? And I'm using these kind of as a plow like a snow plow thinking that these strings are snow and I'm just plowing all these guys right in line with it. So I'm actually, when you bend the B string, I'm actually bending the G string and a little bit of the D string as well, okay? Okay. So I'm doing that guy. That's the very first step of this double bend lick. Or sorry, uh, double bend, double, double stop, double stop. So we're doing a double stop, and what what the double stop is in reference to is just when you get this sound. Okay, so but that's the very first thing is is that just getting a lot of muscle on that string, three fingers loaded up, bending the B string, G string, and a bit of the D string, and then once you get that up to pitch. Then sneak in your pinky finger, it's just hanging out, right? And then you hit it right on the on the high E string. And you can hit those together or you can hit them separate. So you can hit one. Or you can hit them at the same time. Right? So here's that first version. And the second version, strumming up at the same time. Okay? So and yeah, as you can hear there, I'm hitting, doing the bend, hitting the, uh, the double stop note, hitting the first note again and releasing it, right? So, there's, there I'm, I am going bend, high E string, release, and then back up. A little vibrato on top doesn't ever, doesn't ever hurt. Okay, up two frets. And then you can even go up to the 17th fret. And hey, how about two more frets? Okay, that sounds kind of cool, hey? It might be a good little sequence for you to practice, so. Or sorry, that was second, uh, 14th fret. All right. So guys, I think that is all the questions that are coming in for right now. And again, um, definitely check out the seven day free trial that you can get hooked up on through the Campfire Guitar Star Networks. Otherwise, Make sure to check out the other rock guitar solos of the week. This is number seven. So if you enjoyed this lesson and got something out of it, um, there may be six other lessons for you to dig into with the uh, jam tracks and tabs and all that good stuff. So uh, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. You guys have a great weekend, and we will catch you next week for rock guitar solo number eight, the final rock guitar solo of the series. We'll be going over a blues and rock uh, uh, kind of vibed out track, which will be super sweet, kind of done in the style of like Cream or Mountain, kind of like that late 60s psychedelic blues rock. So we'll be digging into that and I'll catch you next Friday, same time, same place. And until then, keep on ripping it up.